you want to know what molecular and ionic compounds are, you have come to the right place. Let's get on with the lesson. So this starts off with the big question. What are ionic compounds? Ionic compounds are comprised of cations, which are metals, and anions, which are non-metals. And most of the time, the charge is neutral. But ionic compounds aren't just that easy. Of course, they have their rules. So a cation and an anion, which a cation has a positive charge and an anion has a negative, must cancel out. So for example, NaCl. So sodium, Na, has a one, one positive charge and chlorine, which is an anion, has one negative charge. So one plus negative one equals zero. And that is how that rule works out. For the next rule, you always put the cation first. For example, sodium or magnesium. Never, ever, ever put the anion first or else you will be in some hot water. For the third rule, nonmetals form anions by gaining electrons to complete an octet. For example, and the anion chlorine is lacking one electron and it needs to gain that electron from somewhere. So a sodium and a chlorine will share and bond and then, boom, they'll have the electron configuration of a noble gas. Number four is that polyatomic ions act as a unit. Here is a sheet of polyatomic ions. I will add them right here. Okay, the fifth rule for transition metals, you have to show the charge of the cation as Roman numerals because sometimes they can be a little bit confusing without them. For example, iron, which is Fe, with the Roman numerals two or three. So let's get into ionic compound names and formulas. So I am going to start with 12, which I need to fill in a name, and 34, which I need to fill in a formula. So for number 12, it is lithium three, phosphate, because it is PO4, So 34, which is calcium oxide, should be pretty simple. And all you need to do for that one is figure out what's calcium on the periodic table. So CA for calcium. And then oxide, which is simply the letter O. Boom! Now I'm done giving you guys the mini lesson of ionic compounds. So now it's time for the molecular compound, so Lego. So you might ask, what is a molecular compound? So a molecular compound is a group of atoms held by a covalent bond. So I won't be covering covalent bonds this time. You can always, always Google them for more information to help learn about this or else this video will be like five hours long of me just talking and talking and talking. So here are the rules of the molecular compound. So that's the one non-name rule that at least I could think of, but there are many more naming rules. And here they are, and I will explain them. Feel free to pause the video if you need to look at them more or any of that. So, so number one, the first element always uses its full name. So for example, sulfur is just sulfur. The second element always ends with I'd, just FYI. Okay, that was stupid. <laughs> These are prefixes to see how many elements are present in the molecular compound. Here is an example of elements 
using that name. So for example, carbon dioxide is the stuff you breathe out every single day. You are probably breathing out that stuff right now or you're just inhaling oxygen. But carbon is just one single carbon and then dioxide means there are two oxygens. So carbon dioxide. This is a worksheet for how to find the chemical names for molecular compounds. So here is how I do it. As you can see, most of this is already filled out, except for these two, which I will fill out in front of you guys, just to show you how it's done. So the name is given iodine monofluoride, but I need to find the formula for it. So as you know on the periodic table, iodine is simply the letter I. Then for monochloride, remember mono means one, so all I need to do is put Cl because if it's only one, it is unnecessary because people will assume that it is one. So that's done. The next one is CH4. So as you guys know, on the periodic table, C means carbon. And since there is nothing by it, that means it is only one carbon, so I just need to write carbon. Then you can see the H, and that means hydrogen on the periodic table, and that there are four hydrogens. So four is tetra, that means I need to write and that is how to find the chemical names. That's pretty much it for my chemistry lesson. Be aware, I am not a chemist, but a chemist in training. So let's get on to the actual outro. If you are still watching this, congratulations. You have won a free virtual donut. Woo! Well, this was my chemistry project. And thank you so, so much to my chemistry teacher. You know who you are for signing this and watching this video. And I hope I got everything right. Well, shout outs from last time's video, wasn't a whole week ago, it was a little more than that. Go to, do that dab, do that dab, water flip, these wonderful people. Well, any housers, thanks so much for watching my video. Thanks so, so much for 2.2 thousand Rita Bs. That is insane and even more insane. One of my videos, my strange addiction to toothpaste has hit over a hundred thousand views. That's crazy. And I can't even wrap my mind around that. Like honestly, it's crazy. Well, again, thanks so much for watching my video. Have a wow of fine day and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Whatever. Oh, there's a crow in the sky. I wish I could get my camera, but it's already flown away by now. Okay.